What's up, Slackers? Welcome to Book Cheats. First off, I want to thank you guys so much for the support lately, for all the likes and subscriptions. It definitely helps my channel out. So for this video, I was editing it, and as I finished editing it, I clicked to export it to YouTube, and as I was exporting it, I accidentally pulled out the SD card, and it corrupted half of the footage. So half the footage is from before, and half the footage is after. Anyway, let's get right into the book. Today we'll be talking about To Kill a Mockingbird, Chapter 8. So at the beginning of this chapter, Scout says that this was the coldest winter since 1885. During the winter, Mrs. Radley died and nobody seemed to care because nobody really knew her. She didn't really socialize at all. Atticus, Scout and Jem's father went over to the funeral and when he got back, Scout asked Atticus if he had seen Boo Radley in their house. Atticus looked over sternly at Jem and Scout and told him that he didn't see them. Jem told Scout not to ask any more things about Boo Radley because he knew Atticus suspected Jem of losing his pants over at Boo Radley's house that one night. The next morning, Scout woke up and she looked out the window and she let out a blood curdling scream. Atticus quickly rushed up the stairs to see what was wrong and when he saw Scout gawking out the window He sort of laughed and he told Scout that it was just snow because they lived in Alabama Jem and Scout had never seen snow before Jem knew what snow was just because he heard about it at school But Scout hadn't even heard of snow before the phone rang and the operator said that school was canceled Because it was the first time it had snowed since 1885 Jim and Scout asked Atticus if he knew how to build a snowman. Atticus laughed and said that he didn't even know if there was enough snow to make a snowball. Jim and Scout put their coats on and rushed outside to have their first experience with snow. Scout said that every time she took a step in the snow, the snow would melt wherever she stepped. Jim stopped Scout and said that they should stop playing in their yard and that they should go to their neighbor's, Miss Mowdy's house, and play in her snow so that they could wait for the snow to fall and that eventually they would have enough snow to build a snowman. As they walked over to Miss Mowdy's house, they saw Mr. Avery walking down the street and he told them that the snow was their fault for being such bad kids. Jim and Scout started playing in Miss Mowdy's yard and Miss Mowdy came outside and told the children that they should only play in the center of the yard because she didn't want them walking over her flowers that were covered in snow. Miss Mowdy complained that if the snow stuck overnight, that her flowers would be frozen solid. What killed the dinosaurs? The ice age! So Miss Mowdy began to wrap her flowers in plastic and Jem asked Miss Mowdy if he could borrow her snow. Miss Mowdy excitedly told them to take all the snow they could and Jem and Scout began to rake snow, dirt, and mud into a basket. They brought three baskets full of snow over to their house and they began building a snowman. They started to shape the snowman and their snowman looked really pathetic because it was so dirty and muddy and Jem changed the snowman several times to look like different neighbors. Eventually, Jem and Scout decided to make the snowman look like Mr. Avery, and so they made the snowman really fat and angry. To make the snowman look better, they covered the outside layer of the snowman with just white snow. And when they were done, they had a pretty good looking snowman. Jim and Scout excitedly waited for their father Atticus to get back from work. And when Atticus got back from work, he told the children that their snowman was really impressive, but that the snowman looked too much like Mr. Avery and that they should change what it looked like so that Mr. Avery didn't get upset. Jem went over to Miss Mowdy's house and grabbed her gardening hat and some shears and stuck those two things on the snowman. Miss Mowdy came outside and acted upset that the snowman looked like her, but she was actually impressed and thought it was kind of funny. That night was the coldest night that Atticus could remember. It was 16 degrees, and Atticus asked their family cook, Calpurnia, if she wanted to stay at their house for the night. Calpurnia had a smaller house with smaller ceilings, and so she knew that her house would be warmer than theirs. She asked Atticus to take her home, and Atticus drove her home. And when Atticus got back, he tucked the kids right into bed. That night, at around 1 a.m. in the morning, Atticus woke up Jem and Scout because something was up. Scout asked Atticus what was happening, and Atticus said that Miss Mowdy's house was on fire. 
Atticus told Jem and Scout to go down to the Radley's house and stay there till he got them. Atticus led them down to the Radley's tree and left them there and went back to help everybody with the fire. It seemed like the whole town was there to help and several men had pushed the town fire truck to Miss Maddie's house because it wouldn't start because it was so cold. Several men, including Atticus, kept rushing into the house trying to pull out furniture to save as much as they could. Atticus made sure to save Miss Mowdy's favorite possession, her rocking chair. The fire continued, and Mr. Avery was the last one in the house. He was on the second floor, pushing out Miss Mowdy's mattress. The men yelled up to Mr. Avery that the stairs were now on fire and that he needed to climb out the window. As Mr. Avery was trying to escape the house, he jumped out the window, but because he was so fat, he got caught in the window. Scout turned her head away because she didn't want to see Mr. Avery get burned alive, but after a few minutes of wiggling out the window, Mr. Avery got free. Eventually two of the fire trucks from the neighboring towns arrived. One was from Clark's Ferry, the other was from Abbotsville, and they began to spray all the neighboring houses to avoid the fire spreading to all the other houses. By the time these fire trucks got there, Miss Mowdy's house was in complete shambles. As Scout and Jem watched the fire, Scout said that she was so cold that she couldn't feel her toes. Even though Jem was trying to hold her tight and make sure that she was staying warm, she was still frozen solid. Most of the men stayed all night fighting the fire, and once dawn hit, most of the men went home. Atticus went down to the Radley's place to pick up Jem and Scout and take them home. And as they were walking home from the big ordeal of the fire, Atticus noticed that Jem and Scout had blankets wrapped around them. Atticus was infuriated because he told them to stay right by the Radley's tree. Atticus asked them, where did you guys get those blankets? I thought I told you guys to stay by the Radleys. Scout and Jem were shocked because they couldn't remember where they had gotten those blankets at all. Atticus said that Mr. Nathan Radley was at the fire, so there was no way that he could have given them the blankets. Mr. Nathan Radley was the only person who could have given them the blankets. And maybe because Jem was being accused of lying, or maybe because he was so tired from all the or ordeals that had happened, Jem snapped. <laughs> Jem began to confess everything that he was hiding from Atticus. All the things that involved Boo Radley of them sneaking over there and looking in the window. Even the person who was leaving the stuff in the knot of the tree. Jem confessed everything. Scout was shocked that Jem was revealing all of their darkest secrets. But to both of their surprises, Atticus was really calm. He kind of chuckled and said that they should probably keep the blankets and that they might have a chance to thank him someday. Scout was confused and asked, thank who? Atticus said, why Boo Radley, of course. Boo, Ra Boo Radley, of course. He told the children that the only person who could have given them those blankets was Boo Radley, and they probably didn't see him because they were too distracted by the fire. Scout's stomach immediately turned over. Just the thought of Boo Radley creeping up behind her freaked her out. Atticus saw the excitement in Jem's face about their encounter with Boo Radley, but Atticus tried to snuff out this light of excitement and told him not to go on any adventures over to the Radleys even though this had happened. Atticus told them that they could skip school because they had been up all night and he let them sleep till noon. As soon as noon rolled around, Scout and Jem went over to Miss Mowdy's house to cheer her up and to also return her hat and garden shears that they had borrowed for their snowman. They went over to Miss Mowdy's house, and to their surprise, Miss Mowdy didn't seem sad at all. The truth was that she actually was sad, but that she but she hid it really well. Scout asked Miss Mowdy why she wasn't sad, and Miss Mowdy joked that she thought about burning down the house herself because she wanted to downsize, and she didn't do it because she didn't want to be thrown into the loony bin, and for everybody to think that she was crazy. Jem looked down at Miss Mowdy's hands, and they were covered in blood and dirt because she had been working on her house all morning, trying to fix it up. Jem was shocked and told Miss Mowdy that they could help her clean up her house. Miss Mowdy smiled and told Jem and Scout that they had other responsibilities to care to, as she motioned to their snowman that had been destroyed by all the men trampling over it. Jem and Scout smiled and ran out the door to fix their snowman, and as they ran out the door, Miss Mowdy was laughing. And that concludes the chapter.
Thanks so much for watching Book Cheats. Please leave that like and subscribe. If you have any questions from your homework, leave a comment down below. You guys have an awesome day and slack on.